OCO, my name is Shanice DeCloud. I work for the Cherokee Nation Cultural Resource Center. The following video is part of our new education series geared toward assisting teachers set up their own cultural activities in the classroom. In this video, I'm going to show you how we prepare the corn husk to get ready for a corn husk doll class. When you purchase your corn husk, you have a couple of options. You can purchase online in bulk, and you'll get a large bag similar to this. This is about 10 pounds. Or you can purchase from your local grocery store in a smaller quantity like this. What we want to do before class is to grade or sort the corn husk into different sizes that we'll need for each part of the corn husk doll. Each part of the doll will need a different type of corn husk. So you'll have a thicker, larger, nicer looking piece for the skirts. You can have smaller, narrower pieces to make the arms. And then for the head, you'll want a wider piece similar to the skirt, but the corn husk itself will be much thinner and more pliable than the skirt will be. For the shawl, you're looking for anything, any other additional pieces. The shawl can be made out of any type of corn husk. Typically, I have found in a bag of corn husks, you're going to find a lot more narrow pieces or pieces that are slightly damaged. So you're going to have a lot of materials for making arms. This piece might have been better for a skirt, but it's kind of ragged on the side. It doesn't look quite as appealing. So I would use something like this because it's thicker. I would make that into an arm. So I'll just go through the stack and pull out pieces that I think would work best for different parts of the doll. This piece is nice and wide with no blemishes, but it's not very heavy. The material isn't very thick. So I'll use something like this to make one of the doll heads. I'm now gonna show you how to assemble the heads and I'll show you what materials you'll need for that. So first you'll need a tub with water, any size, depending on how much you're working with. You'll need your yarn that you've cut and what we use are these wooden dowel caps. These can be bought online. And they come in different quantities, but we generally buy the 100 piece pack. And this is a one and one quarter inch dowel cap with a half inch hole. We use these because it makes all of the doll heads uniform, so you don't have students squabbling over who got the right size head. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pull a piece of corn husk from what I've sorted out. I'm choose a nice wide piece that's fairly thin and just dunk it in the water for just a few seconds. It doesn't have to soak for very long. I'll just wring out some of the extra water. So now I'm going to take this piece of corn husk and I'm going to cut off about the top inch, inch and a half. It's not very exact, but we need a nice even top. To this corn husk. Now I'm just going to pleat the top. I'm just going to kind of fold it over on itself like this. I'm going to fold that over just a little bit, about half an inch down. And I'm going to put this part into the dowel cap. This just creates some bulk that can be wedged down in that hole. And I can push it in with my scissors. That way the tension will just hold that corn husk into that dowel cap. Once I have that on there, I'm going to gently open up this corn husk. And I'm going to roll the ball inside the corn husk, just like that. 
Now I'm going to bring this around kind of like curtains. I'm going to start on one side and bring it over as far as I can without, without tearing the corn husk. And I'll take the other side and bring it over the top as far as I can go. And now I'm going to gently twist and pinch and push that ball up into that corn husk nice and tight. And it'll look something like this. Now if the corn husk is too thin, it has a tendency to tear. It might split along the sides. And you might be able to see that wooden ball through the corn husk. If this happens, sometimes you can fold that corn husk over itself the other direction and try to hide those splits. But sometimes I just take it apart and start over again and I'll save this corn husk that has split to make into arms. So now that I have it twisted around, I'm going to take a piece of yarn. I'm going to wrap it. Oops. I'm going to wrap it tightly around that neck and then just tie it off two or three times and get a nice secure knot on there. I, I don't like to trim it too close to the knot because I don't want the knot to come undone. So just a little tassel hanging off is no big deal. And that is how you make the head for your corn husk doll. This piece is nice and wide. It doesn't have any blemishes or tears and it's nice and thick. So when the doll is finished, it will stand up on a table when this corn husk is dry. So this piece I would use as a skirt. So I'll just start making piles. So I have a pile for material to make heads, arms, and skirts. As I sort materials, I'll keep them in bags, trash bags, tote boxes, any kind of bin where you can keep them sorted and labeled just so you know what materials are gonna go where. You're going to need twice as many skirt pieces as you have students because each doll that they make will need two pieces for their skirts. To make the individual components of the dolls and for the students to make the dolls, you're going to need yarn and a lot of it. We purchase just the cheap, simple version of yarn from your local craft store, um, local superstore. This is just a regular acrylic yarn. This is a cotton twine. But we take this yarn and we cut it into smaller pieces about 12 to 16 inches long. This is a good length to make the components of the doll and to give to your students to, to assemble the doll. I'm now going to show you how to make the arms for the Cornhouse dolls. And I'm going to choose a piece from my container for, that was chosen for arms. As you can see, it's more narrow. This one isn't really too thin. It's not really too thick. So it should make a pretty decent arm. So just like the heads, I'm going to take this piece and dunk it in the water. It doesn't have to soak for very long, just a few seconds. Just enough to make it pliable so that it doesn't tear. I'm going to take this out, wring it out a little bit. Now I already have a finished arm piece here, so I'm going to use that to measure. If you don't already have one made, this is measured about three to four inches long. So I'm just going to lay this against my corn husk. And right there where it ends, I'm going to pinch that together and just use my scissors to cut that piece off. Sometimes you can make another set of arms out of this piece, but because it comes to a narrow point, your arms might be a little lopsided. They might be thicker on one end and thinner on the other. So most of the time I just throw this away. So now we have this piece that we're going to use to make the arm. And I've also got a couple pieces of yarn here that I'll need. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it almost in half. I want to leave just a little edge, about a quarter of an inch 
uncovered. And then I'm going to just roll it up really tight, as tight as I can get it. And that little bit of an edge will help hold it because it's kind of damp still. And now I'll take a piece of yarn and I'll wrap it around one end and tie that off. I'll take my other piece of yarn and tie off the other end. And then I'll just trim off the extra yarn and leave a little bit hanging so my knot doesn't come undone. And there's your arm. So these are the two main components that we've worked on in this video. And they are still damp. And because this corn husk is a natural material, um, we don't want to let these stay wet and put them away in a box or store them in a bag. We want to let these completely dry. And that takes about a day, maybe a day and a half to completely dry out. We do that so that it doesn't get moldy or mildew and, and smell. You just want to make sure these dry out completely before you store them. So we have all of our pieces prepared and assembled. And what you see here is what each student will need to make their corn husk doll. They're going to need one head, one arm piece, which will become both arms on the doll. They will need two pieces of dyed corn husk, either two different colors or both the same color to make the shawl. They're going to need five pieces of yarn. To make a girl doll, they will need three of these pieces of yarn. And then there will be two extra pieces if they would like to make a boy doll. And then they will need two large pieces of corn husk to make the skirts. A fun element for these corn husk dolls is having these pieces that have been dyed using cloth dye. To do this is fairly simple. You'll need a pot of boiling water and whatever colors of clothing dye you'd like to use. This is just store-bought dye that we get from craft stores or local super centers or local grocery stores. Uh, you use about half a bottle per pound of material and you can get some very vibrant colors just depending on how much dye you use and how long you let it soak. I'll let these corn husks soak for about 15 minutes again just to soak up some good color and then they'll be taken out and rinsed in cold water just like the basket reed. You still might see some of this color leach out into the water you use when students are making dolls, but for the most part, the colors will stay true. After you have dyed your corn husk, you want to make sure it dries out. As you can see, this is dried completely out. That way it can be stored away for later use. To dry your corn husk, uh, you need a large open space, um, a large open table, you might want to put down a tablecloth, um, a plastic tablecloth is preferable. Anything that you don't mind if it gets dye on it because some dye will still leach off as it dries. So typically when we dye our corn husk, we make sure to lay down a plastic tablecloth and then we lay out our corn husk so that it doesn't overlap. We wanna make sure that there's gaps between each piece and we let that dry overnight before we store it away. Wado for your time to learn about Cherokee culture and history. Share what you learned today with someone else. For more information, contact Cherokee Nation Education Services Cultural Resource Center at education at cherokee.org or 918-453-5000 and ask for education services.